Hello, there's your Wisconsin wine guy, and welcome back to our next wine purge. I just like the sound of that wine purge. And I hope you enjoyed the last wine purge I did. That was a lot of fun for me, you know, to uh, purge that wine. And I wish I could have went to year 20. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we always get older, and when you reach a certain point, you get beyond 50. It's time to start drinking those wines. If you have no one to share some of these wines with, you need to start drinking those wines. Then, okay? that being said, we are here for our second wine purge. I am so going to have a wonderful time doing this. And I do have a surprise. I'm going to also be doing some purges on some of my Wisconsin wines that I sat on. Hey, <laughs> look forward to that. But today, we're going to be doing a wine purge of 2008. 16 years, 2008, Chateau Neuf du Pas, uh, Vielle, Vielle Vigne, uh, meaning old vines, loose translation, by Tordu Laurent. Uh, they're negotiants, you know, in France. And what that means is that they uh, work with various uh, vineyards in the area and they uh, purchase grapes, make wine, and then send it out to everyone else. I just made that real simple, huh? Yeah. So negotiations, uh, some negotiations actually buy wine and then work their magic. And some actually go a step further and just uh, have the grapes harvested by the vineyard owners, brought to the, the winery, and they produce the wines themselves. So it varies from place to place. But this is one of the ones in which they are actually have hands on in making wine, but selecting the best. Chateau Neuf du Pop, for those who are unfamiliar, it's coming out of the Rhone region. You know, and you may know the Rhone region is more famous for its red wines, uh, the Grenache Syrah Movedra, GSM, for those who are in the industry, you know, but they're more or less known for their white wines, which you're able to find some of their white wines, you're going to be in for a surprise. And we'll talk more about this here uh, when we get to it, but this is going to be a uh, Rhone white or Chateau Neuf du Pas white. Some like the Beaujolais region, where they're known for their red wines, but they also produce white wines in the Beaujolais uh, region of France. And I'll see if I get my hands on some of those to share with you. But enough about that. Let's get to Tardieu and Laurent, the 2008 Chateau du Pop. And I'm going to let the uh, winery, uh, family member from the winery, tell you a little bit about them, about their philosophy, and when it comes to making wine. Here we go. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Bastien Tardieu. I'm the, the son of Michel Dadeu, the owner of uh, La Maison Tardieu Laurent. La Maison Tardieu Laurent is a new estate. My father built it in 1994. It was the first vintage. I'm involved for three years now as a winemaker. For 2008, the Tardieu Laurent estate is owned by 100% by the family. The associate of my father, Dominique Laurent, left the business in 2008. So we are very proud to say that it's a family business. So my sister working there, my mother working there, obviously my father also, <laughs> and, and I. It's really family business. We are negotiant. Negotiant is a um, typically French concept. It's born exactly in Burgundy. So what does it mean? We are buying the wine to the producer and we are selecting the best wine from the producer. So we are working with 100 different producers through the Rhone Valley, North and South. There is no contract with the producer. Everything is based on the trust. Once we have selected the wine, they rack the wine in our barrel and we age the wine after this between 20 and 24 months in barrel. So it's pretty cool because we're working with every cru in Rhone Valley, like Cote Roti, Hermitage for the north, Chateau Neuf and Gigondas for the south. So it's very interesting because we have very good view uh, in Rhone Valley and we can easily talk about the new vintage. We like a lot to have a um, good relationship with the producer. It's, uh, it's really, really important to uh, talk about the vintage, the winemaking, um, is, um, is what we are looking for. 
Today um, we show 2011 wine. 11 is really good vintage. Uh, we are quite lucky in uh, Northern Italy because we got three great vintage, 9, 10 and 11. 11 is a very fruity with a good well balance, uh, good acidity, good freshness also. It is um, wine for the, for the keeping, but also it's wine very affordable when it's young. We will enjoy it for the 10 years. And there you have it. You know, uh, I'm going to see if I can put that logo back up so that we could have that as our image. Ah, beautiful. Okay. So we're going to have that as our image as we begin to talk more about the Tardula Rock. Uh, I don't know if you caught that in, in the video that it is now completely family owned. In 2008, Laurent uh, separated from the business. And now it's all family, but they still carry the name Tordo Laurent because it's the name that has been most recognized uh, throughout the world, throughout the years of, of wine being made. I believe they started in the early 90s uh, for this, early to mid 90s. So now this wine's journey, just like uh, the Jarvis, it had the same journey. You know, they were picked up by me around the same time. You know, so went from the house in a nice, beautiful cellar to the condo, which also had a, a nice cellar, you know, which kept a nice, even temperature. So uh, in the house, again, it was uh, 60, 65 in the summer, 50, 55 in the winter in the condo. Uh, I was like 55 in the winter, 65 in the summer to where it is now today. I think I did uh, two more moves. Uh, one, again, was kept in the closet in the coolest room, bedrooms, the whole bedroom was pretty much de dedicated to wine, you know, and then to where it is today. So the wine has traveled, okay? I like to give the journey so you know what's happening. And now today, it has a temperature of 65 in the 60, 65 in the uh, winter. Uh, to 65, 70 in the summertime, uh, being stored on the wine rack with the rest of the wines. I don't have as much wine as I used to. It went down from 2,000 bottles down to a couple of hundred, you know. So I don't have that many wines now. So the wines now, they just stay inside the wine rack. Now, interesting thing about that, when people may hear say, wow, 70 degrees, you know, that's, that's, that's quite warm. Yes, it is. Yes, it can be. However, you know, I like to say consistency is key. Remember I told you, you know, 60, 65 in the, in the, winter, in the winter, 70 degrees, 65, 70, maybe like 68, 70 in the uh, summertime, but it's consistency. And each of the homes that I, that where the wines lived with me, there was consistency. Now, the only thing that I would say would cause any disruption was that travel time. Each time I moved, the wines were the last thing to be moved. They were packed and moved from one home to the next and then stored where they're going to spend the rest of their time until I moved again. <laughs> OK, so that's the wine's journey. Uh, and I'm always nervous when I open up a wine, you know, years later, especially today, 2024, and knowing what the journey of these wines were. How oh, how I miss my Easter parties where my guests can open any bottle of wine and we would just go at it. So let me tell you a little bit about the 2008 vintage. I found some information on it. It seems to be the 2008 started out as a wet year. You know, I mean, there was lots of rain early on. And in the uh, early part, going in the early parts of September, uh, by the uh, end of September, you know, they had like warmth. Uh, September, October is pretty warm. So you have good ripening happening uh, with the vineyards, uh, with, uh, with the grapes in the vineyard. So that was a good thing. You know, so it had some challenges to start, you know, starting off wet and cold, you know, but then finding that nice middle temperature, you know. And what I found interesting uh, back when I first acquired this wine in several bottles, you know, and I tried some of the reds as well. Uh, the, what I found interesting is that, you know, and all winemakers, I assume, try to do this, you know, and hopefully it says this today, is to truly let, and it's, it's probably a, a, a ancient thing in, in Europe. You know, but we're kind of we're trying to do that here in the States. But it's to let the year and the vintage speak for itself. 
One thing I don't like about wine, especially wine, a lot of wines being made today, is it, it's all about marketing and branding, not just the label, but also the taste. You know, uh, I'm not going to mention any wine brands, but, you know, when that wine brand first release was phenomenal wine, second release, phenomenal, all of a sudden it became the most popular wine. And then the three, maybe four years and beyond, the wine just tasted the same. It's keeping up with demand, right? So what I like about, you know, some a lot of the winemakers, uh, wineries, especially, you know, Tardieu Laurent, or Tardieu, the family, is that they try to let each vintage speak for itself, period, okay? I'm not going to make this wine be something that it's not in a year didn't call for it. Now, that rainy weather, that wet season affected the red wines as well, okay? Even though you did get that little bit of warmth, but it affected the red wines as well, all right? And so what we're talking about, depending on where uh, they source the grapes, you know, up and down in the Rhone Valley, you know, it's going to have some, maybe have more of a, uh, still be fruity, but more lighter, you know, when it's uh, cooler out, right? So now the grapes are here. It's going to be, we'll get to that in a minute, but it was a, a wet uh, start of the season, which eventually uh, it dried and became cool, enough warmth to uh, ripen the grapes, no rot, you know, but it was still was a limited, a short, small crop. All right. So that was a good thing. And now let's talk about the, uh, this vintage here, the Chateau Neuf du Pop, 2008. Uh, this is going to be 50% Grenache Blanc. Okay, remember, uh, the, what is it called, uh, Ville, Vigne, uh, Old Vines, let's just say Old Vines, okay, my French isn't that good, let's just say Old Vines, okay, when we say Old Vines, we're talking Old Vines, at the period of this point, we'd say what the vines ages were, so 50% Grenache Blanc, and if you're familiar with Grenache, the red grape, okay, you, uh, Grenache is coming out of Spain, you know, Grenache, every place else, you know, you can find that grown almost anywhere, but its origins, you know, are in the Rhone Valley. So Grenache Blanc is the white version of Grenache, right? Okay. And now you have the Roussan, okay? Two of the white grapes that are grown in that area in addition to the Marsan. So usually you'll find Grenache Blanc, Roussan, Marsan, or Roussan, Marsan, okay? Uh, all white grapes. And again, the white wines of the Rhone Valley are very rare. It's very rare to find these uh, stateside, but if you can find, get your hands on some, uh, give it a taste and see what you think. All right. So now for the vines, as I get this open, I should have been opening this, but you know what happened last time, right? And I pulled this from the shelf, put it in the refrigerator, all right, to bring the temperature down a little bit. So it's now at 59 degrees. Okay. So it went from about uh, 68, 70. I brought it down to 59 degrees for this tasting i didn't want to get it too cold because too cold would mean that i won't be able to taste what the wine actually tastes like it may mask okay so step one that part's so good look at that part looks pretty good right so that step one part is really good remember last time we had grape schmutz everywhere uh, i should say cork schmutz everywhere so here we go so now the vines, Grenache, the Grenache Blanc for this is 50 years, is that right? 50, no, Grenache Blanc is 60 years old at the time of this bottling. 60 years old for the Grenache Blanc and for the Roussan, which makes up the other 50%, the grapes, the vines are 20 years old. All right, Ooh, here we go. Oh, baby. That looks wonderful. Get a good look at that. Let's open this up now so we can get the full view, right? That looks wonderful. Oh, my God. And it smells good, too. Now, the bottles were laid on their sides the entire time. The bottles were on their side. The only time this bottle stood upright. Even when it was moved, it was on the side. The only time this bottle stood upright was when it was being moved, or when it was being moved from the rack to the refrigerator today. Let's get our Hades Corker in. You know, again, a Hades Corker, get yourself one of these. You know, cheap, shameless plug. Has a nice little screen in there for uh, helping you filter and aerate, a little pin for aerating. 
So we're going to do that. But I also have my strainer here, which we had to go get that last week to uh, strain some of the sediments that had that broken cork in there. But this looks pretty good. There's no broken cork. You know, it's rare that you'll find some sediment in white wines. You may find some crystals, tartaric acid in the bottom of the bottle, but this looks pretty good. Wow, 16 years old. And here we go. I'm going to do just like last time. I'm going to, I'm going to decant some, and then I'm going to just pour others straight into the glass. So there's our decant. Look at that color. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And here's our non-decanted version right here. I can tell you this. It's slightly darker, you know, uh, it has some age to it, but it still has some very nice uh, golden hues from then, but it's slightly darker now. It has some age to it. We're talking 16 years, but it's still beautiful, absolutely beautiful, you know, and just from here, I from here, I cannot smell any faults. And here's a little tip for you, you know, when you are trying to discover some faults in wine, you know, always pour into the glass pour some wine out you may smell something a little bit of corkiness in the bottle you know and opening up the bottle and letting it let some of the air again this has been sitting in here for 16 years so we're gonna let this air out a little bit right 16 years you know we're talking about a a growth of things happening or transitions happening with the wine over a period of 16 years so it's been stuck in here all this time so let's let it breathe alcohol on this one, oh, see if I can find the alcohol in this. Oh boy, oh, fourteen percent alcohol, and which is typical of the white wines, you know, from that area, from the Rhone. They're going to be higher in alcohol. You know, they'll be talking about ripe fruit, especially between these two grapes, the Grenache Blanc and the Roussan. Let's give it a smell. Now I would say at the at the time when I got this, uh, it was at sixty five. I want to say sixty five retail. It was at that time. You know, I have to find a retail price on it today. I forgot to look that up. Let's give it a nose. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh my, my word. I get so excited that when I open up a wine and the nose is just wonderful. Oh, my gosh. I can smell the fruit. Stone fruit, honey. Peach, little apple, pear, sort of licorice. Oh my gosh, that's on this one here. Ooh, more stone fruit and honey coming out of the decanting cup here. Wow, here we go. Let's get a taste. This is first. Mm. Oh my God, that is like silk. The acidity is still there. The flavors are still there. It has a nice weight from the palate, but it's like silk. As it goes in and goes down, the honey comes through for sure at 16 years. Mm. Wow. Wow. The honey and peach. I don't know if you ever had caramelized peaches before, or if you had caramelized apples, you know, just lightly caramelized, not thick. You know, this is what you're getting here. Wow. But mm, let's try this one here a little bit more air. How different are they? Again, just like before, this was a lot tighter. Coming here, it's like wide open. You even pick up citrus notes. Mm, now for the taste. Mm. Mm. It's a lot richer coming out of the, the one that was decanted. A lot richer, a lot fuller. 14% alcohol, there's no alcohol burn here. 
this is they're both alike silk but you definitely get a much richer taste from this one here at 59 60 should be at 60 degrees now so i'm going to be saddened again because this aged perfectly he heard his journey i probably could have sat on this to 20 years but i'm blessed to be here today and hopefully i'll be blessed to be here in 20 years because i have quite a bit more wine over there that uh <laughs> you know we'll see what happens right so she was constant wine guy saying to you if you have some older wine that you've been sitting on all these years waiting for that special occasion the special occasion is now especially if it's 10 years old all my purge wines are 10 plus years old that's what we're doing here 10 plus years old for the purge wines and it's you wisconsin wine guy said again to you let your palate be the guy when purging your wine don't sit on it too long i'm gonna see you in the next purge ah ooh. Ciao.